Hey guys, Mario from thewoodfather.com. Um, this video is part two of building the frame for my plywood bandsaw. If you haven't seen the first video, there'll be a link somewhere for it. Um, basically, at the end of the first video, I had just gotten halfway through gluing up the frame. So today I'm going to finish it off and take it all the way to this. Enjoy! So the next step of my frame building plan calls for the MDF template to be screwed into the C-frames um, and then I've got a flush trim bit in the router which is going to run along the MDF trim template and I'll be able to group cut out the insides of the C-shape nice and flush. Um, the outsides I'm not too worried about because they're already square and I'll be able to sand them down at the end but the insides I won't be able to do that nice and easy so the router is going to make short work of it, hopefully. So routing with the flush trim bit worked out really well and I was able to move on to the glue up fairly quickly. And for the glue up I just slathered two of the frames in glue, I just put heaps on there really, and then I sandwiched them all together and I gave them a, a bit of a wiggle back and forth to make sure that glue covered everywhere. And while I was checking to make sure that it was all standing up nice and square I used clamps and screws to tighten it all up together. Some of the C-frames already had existing screw holes, so instead of drilling new ones, I used them as well. But I'm going to paint it in the end, so it doesn't really matter how many holes I make in it. I let that sit for a day, and then uh, the next day it was time to clean it up. So there was just lots of, I don't know, routing, sanding, cutting, planing, all that sort of fun stuff. Unfortunately, the middle panel in the glow up had moved by a couple of millimeters, and I, I didn't notice that at the time, so it took a bit of time to trim that up all the way around. But it came out pretty good in the end. And while I had the frame clamped up in the vise, I figured I may as well start gluing in the, uh, I suppose, the straight sections for the wheel holder and for the base and all that sort of stuff. So, and to be honest, that was a bit of fun. It was like putting together a big Lego set or something like that. But with all the laminations used, I used up a massive amount of glue. I've had a big bottle of glue for maybe two and a half years now, and I really hadn't used all that much of it, but I think I've probably put about half of the bottle into building this frame. That sort of sucks because the shop that I bought it from where it was nice and cheap, they don't exist anymore. So I'm going to have to look around for some more glue. After making the frame for the top, I flipped it around and started working on the bottom section. It's pretty much the same process to be honest, just different lengths of wood and they go in a different order. Um, I did choose to not put the very bottom stretches on just yet. When you watch Matisse's video, he shows that it was um, it's a bit tricky to install the bottom wheel mount if you've already got the entire frame installed, so he advises to add them in later on, so that's what I'm going to done. So 
So instead of gluing those parts in now, I just clamped them into place to make sure the frame held the, held the correct shape. And then once the wheel mounts are all complete, I'll glue them in. So the next day, once it was all dry, I removed all the screws and filled the holes up with putty and then sanded it all back again. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about why I decided to make the bandsaw out of plywood. Um, mainly because if anyone's looked at the plans or watched Matisse's videos, you know that he specifically says, don't make the frame out of plywood. So I guess there's a few different reasons as to why I use plywood. The main one though, you can probably guess, I had a spare sheet of plywood. Um, it's been sitting in the garage for about a year and a half. I bought it for another project and it ended up not being needed for that, I already had enough. And I just haven't used it in the meantime, so I figured it's high, it's, well, I don't know about high quality, but it's good quality stuff, so I may as well use it for this. Um, so. If I didn't use plywood, I'd have to go out and buy probably some pine, because I wouldn't be able to afford any other wood. Um, and I'd have to go buy a fair bit of it, be brand new from the store. It would end up costing me a bit of money. I think I worked it out to be about $130, $140. Not a crazy amount, but you know, why spend it if I've got a sheet of plywood sitting here that will do the exact same job? And I did have some, before I started the project, I did have some offcuts of pine, which is the same sort of wood that I would have bought had I gone to buy uh, pine for the entire frame. Um, so what I did was I cut into some strips, the same as some strips of plywood that I had. And all I did, it wasn't a very scientific test, but I just put my weight on both of them and just saw which one sort of gave the most. And the plywood was stronger in every scenario. So I figure it's got to be at least as strong as the pine. There's basic, plywood's basically glue, isn't it? It's just sheets of wood spread different ways and then there's uh, lots of glue in there sandwiching it all together. So I don't know. I think it's going to be more than strong enough with plywood. Um, using any sort of hardwood or reclaimed wood was out of the question for me, mainly because I don't have a thickness planer, I don't have a jointer, I don't have a hand plane even to get everything down to the desired thickness. So it would have been all over the place. So really I had to get sort of pre-finished wood. A thickness uh, is on the cards one day, but there's a million other things I've got to buy first. Another benefit that I thought of using plywood over pine would be that I could make the entire C-shape out of one piece of wood. So there's no cuts in there that can flex, you know, they're not trying to pull each other apart. It's if this frame wants to flex, it needs to flex the entire sheet of wood. So I figure that's got to make it a bit stronger. If I, if I happen to have two sheets of plywood in the shop, I would have cut the frame parts out of it as well. So instead of inserting those ones at the end, I would have just, it wouldn't have just been a C-shaped frame, it would have been the C with the spikes and the, and the frame down the bottom and everything. I think that would have been a lot stronger as well. But that would have required a lot more ply. Another reason why I thought I might make it out of plywood is because I'm just a little bit curious. Like, how strong does a bandsaw need to be? I've never used one, so I've got no idea how strong it needs to be. But there's like six layers of plywood here. How is that not strong enough? Um, I really hope it does work out, not just because it's my project <laughs> and I want it to work, but because I think it will make it a lot easier for other people who are making bandsaws if they know that, oh yeah, I can build it from plywood and it simplifies the whole project. Um, I've probably spoken enough in this video, so I might end it here. Um, so in a couple of weeks, I will show the next video where I make these wheels and hopefully mount them to the frame, see what happens. Cool, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit like, subscribe, share, all that sort of stuff. I'll catch you next time.